Hello everyone. Just give me one second. I'm trying to see if I can juggle two apples in my hand. <laughs> Which is, we are hoping to have um, both YouTube and Facebook have the live talk broadcast it so if you fail in one the other will help <laughs> so that's my trick of the day I wonder if we will have a good um, connection at all so possibly we'll have one of them working properly hopefully let's see if we can do that so let me know if the quality is of acceptable level if you guys can actually see me or not hello and us good to see you let me just make some changes on the youtube end because i think i have changed some of the settings and it's not really doing a good job here so let me bring that to 400 and we hope that will do it Just give me one second, guys. It's new to me, this dealing with this bad connection here. And I try to make it all happen okay. Audio is good. Streaming is... Make it 352, 58. 358. And we should be hopefully up and running if things don't go bad well we are not sure if it's going to work or not. Maybe I'm pulling too much on the, on the connection. But as long as at least the Facebook one works okay, so we're good to go. So <laughs> having said that, then let's see if the other one will catch up or not. I had a live talk on YouTube yesterday, or was it day before yesterday? And it went pretty well. It, the connection was very good. All the configurations were good. But I wonder, is it because now I have both of them going at the same time <laughs> and they're both on Wi-Fi or is it um, other reasons? So we'll figure out um, as soon as I guess we finish this and see if it recorded better or not. Hello, Sonia. Sonia, do you want to get it all um, uh, maybe hardwired? Uh, it's been quite a bit of a snow here and today during the past day maybe that has something to do with it but anyhow mm, connection on Wi-Fi in here in this area is not that great but I have a green line on YouTube so as you guys um, have noticed I'm broadcasting on YouTube at the same time on Facebook so if you guys are having trouble with YouTube come on Facebook link and if you're having any trouble on Facebook the YouTube channel of mine is broadcasting the same at the same time. I'm trying to try uh, to figure this out and hopefully eventually I'll have a better connection and this will all work out better. Uh, yesterday or day before, it was a really good broadcast, you know, considerably on YouTube. <clears throat> but I have put the cell phone and the um, laptop on top of each other on the screen. So maybe <laughs> they're pulling too much of uh, data and somehow it's not really working good. Anyhow, let me catch up with you. Now, my question for you, Sonia and Enas and the rest of you who are possibly here, I don't know if you are here or not, is that, uh, <clears throat> hello Excalibur, hello Zaheen and hello Carpe Diem. Um, 
<clears throat> if you guys, any of you on YouTube are not having a good reception, come on to my Facebook page link and uh, you will have a Facebook link there, which is maybe better. So you can oscillate between the two. Uh, I'm having kind of a slow um, lag in here today. So now my question for Sonia and Enas and the rest of you who are possibly here is that how come you guys haven't found me on YouTube because I've been doing the <coughs> excuse me the live talks on YouTube is it not are you not registered as a subscriber on YouTube is it why you haven't noticed it because if you are a subscriber on YouTube and you click on that bell every time that I put something new or there is a live talk you will be notified anyhow we are here now a few of us on Facebook and few on YouTube <clears throat> and I would love to hear from the YouTube friends the ones who are tuning in on YouTube how the quality is if you guys are actually getting uh, a, a decent reception rod it doesn't look to me from this end but nevertheless you can start and throw me the questions and we can discuss it and have a short talk or an hour talk and see where it goes yeah the connection keeps cutting out carpe diem if you don't mind go on the facebook channel that the link is on my facebook page as well i mean if you go on facebook pages there mind that seeks truth author and i'm right there so it will be it seems to be very smooth at the facebook end because i'm doing it through my cell phone and um, youtube either it's the connection or because i'm using both of them they're pulling too much and interfering until I figure out how to fix this up. So you can you can put your questions on YouTube uh, screen or Facebook. Either way, I will see it, and I'll be more than happy to respond. So it looks like nobody has a question today because I'm not getting anything. So I have a few questions now I just got from this 
from the YouTube. Now, my YouTube uh, viewers, I had to cut it off and reconfigure and hope that you have a better um, reception now or broadcast. So let me know if you're back and you can see me and I can read uh, your questions. So Bruno asks, or Sam asks, hey, it's been a while. okay, <laughs> Bruno asks, hey, hello, please, how can I forget someone that I love? Uh, this person has only caused me pain, he says, but it's like a drug that I can't get free of. I want to have peace again. Well, uh, the best response to that, Bruno, is to go on my channel, which you are, <laughs> when, you finish, when we finish here, I guess, and you can uh, click on, um, on the search engine part of it, word to the limits of addiction. To the limits of addiction and then there would be a, a video showing up which tells you the the uh, connection between missing the ex and in a relationship and drug addiction and it clearly explains to you how it works and why it works then you will have the knowledge to be able to easily deal with it and of course uh, if you go on the channel and just key in how to forget the ex why you miss the X and all these things, there'll be number of videos come to you which are elaborately explained what it is you're looking for. Otherwise, uh, the, the question you're asking is not just one or two sentences. It's a quiet, <laughs> elaborate explanation which I've done numbers of videos on it. So just search for that word, uh, how to forget someone or how to not miss the X why you missed the X and things like that, and you will have a, uh, lots of videos to, to check out. Now, and now one from Facebook. Jacob says, hello, hello dear. Question, question soon. What does question soon mean? <laughs> As I have broken up with a long distance girlfriend, Jacob says, today. Ooh. Reception is working well via Facebook. Okay, good. So, what is the question? Um, <laughs> I thought there was a question here, Jacob. Maybe you want to reword it uh, or resend it. Now, Zahin says, even if I don't um, want to remember the memories attached to my ex, they always keep coming to my mind. And also, many places, sounds are affecting my brain and emotions a lot. Many places, sounds are affecting my brain and emotions a lot. Any idea how to get rid of them? Well, to get rid of them is simply to know what they are. And if you recognize how we discussed in yesterday or day before, we had a live talk on Facebook, on, on YouTube, which actually went well, good, quite uh, good reception we had. We discussed the question of uh, desire. And the reason that you, when you remember your ex and you miss her, is because of the ingredients and the steps to take for desire to be born is already stored in your memory as an emotional file. And when you think of your girlfriend, all those pictorials and all those files about her, along with experiences of touching and being together and active together, doing things, uh, intimacy, kissing, all that also comes along with it, which many of those are exact same steps necessary for desire to be born. So when you think of her, all those things that needs to go through for desire to be born, it's already memorized here. 
And you, when you think of him, you think that it's happening again and the desire is refreshed and it's reborn. But when you're recognizing that this is just a recording of all that and you don't have to respond to it, it's a reaction to already existing memory and not really an actuality of events, then it will help you not to be affected by the memories to a level of uh, discomfort or anxiety. So again, if you try to, I think it will be released on 26th of this month, um, the live talk that we did. And so it will have an elaborate discussion. I try to trim them to one uh, question and one answer video, but I'm not sure when I get time to do it. Um, Amber Khan, hello dear, good to see you here. Now, Jacob, you never came back with a question. I guess there was none. And Sonia, how is world turning for you? <laughs> it's been a while. Now, um, YouTube friends who are tuning in from YouTube, please let me know if you can hear me or uh, if, if it's at least legible or are you going to switch to Facebook? I'd appreciate the feedback, guys, so I'll know what's going on as far as the configuration. Carpe says, Mayor, and the reception is a bit choppy, but getting better. Okay. I guess it's just the connection that I have. Um, I would have liked to have a, a um, hardwired connection between the modem and the laptop, but the laptops, as you know, don't have that the thick uh, connection possibility. But I'll figure something out now that I know what the problems are. Amber Khan says, how are you, Mehran? Yes, I can hear you fine. Okay, good. Looks like we have a very good uh, connection on Facebook. Um, the ones who are on YouTube and watching, if it's not going well, just switch to Facebook page of mine and it seems to be smoother. Hello, Patrick. How are you? Hope all is well with you. Ah, Patrick is on YouTube and he says that, okay, all right. Yeah, it's choppy on Facebook, on, on YouTube, but it's better on Facebook. Um, I fiddled a little bit more with it yesterday and it was supposed to make it better because I was watching a specialist on YouTube teaching that. But I guess I would have to maybe go to the, go back to the original one. But the original uh, session was, I just tried to make it better. I guess it, it doesn't. So I'll, I'll configure it again the same as I did last one. Thank you, Patrick. Yeah, uh, we're, um, we're moving ahead and trying to make the channel more popular as it seems to be more and more um, useful for people around the world and I'm delighted about that lots of emails that I receive and um, increase in the um, Skype consultation that I do for everyone who needs it around the world uh, it's all indications of um, um, contents are reaching more people around the world and I would like to uh, hope that we will be able to have lots of audience so we can be of some more use to people and at the same time make the whole effort worthwhile um, to be able to advance it to better technologies and you know more of services possible Mike where have you been Mike Murdoch good to see you well Mike 
Have you not, are you not, I'm sure you are a subscriber to YouTube. I've been on YouTube many times while I was not on, on Facebook. So why has it been that I've lost all my Facebook um, um, enthusiasts on the program and you haven't followed the program on YouTube? Is it not alerting you that there is some event going on or have you guys just been busy? You can't all be busy. I guess I've been, since I've switched to YouTube, I've missed many of you. I mean, connection with many of you. Ah. Uh, here, we have no questions. So I go on YouTube, see if there's a question here. Now, maybe my YouTube um, friends can tell <laughs> Excalibur why don't you go on uh, Facebook it has a better reception I like to have most of you who are having trouble with face with uh, YouTube go on Facebook uh, page of uh, mind that seeks truth author and um, we have a better reception there and Bruno Zahin I hope you guys heard um, a short response I had for you on your question and if you can't see me then go on the Mind That Seeks Truth Facebook page and uh, catch up with us there yeah uh, Excalibur the lag is painful but then you can go on Facebook page there's no lag here uh, let me know if you heard me everybody from YouTube you can go to Facebook page and when I see all of you have left then I will stop the face uh, stop the YouTube um, and we'll just be on Facebook for today BB BB says I don't get any warning from YouTube I think BB because you have to click on that little bell so it will it will notice it will send you a notice that i'm on there's a little bell beside the subscription that you've subscribed and then there's a little bell you got to click on it so that will remember to let you know whenever there's an event or there's a live talk um so remember anyone who cannot here or has choppy reception on YouTube go on Facebook and we are all there because we are broadcasting at the same time on Facebook I'm going to cut off the uh, 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 the uh, broadcasting on YouTube, so we'll have more of a <laughs> Wi-Fi juice on this one, and then I'll figure out how to how to be able to do it next time. So let's pay attention to what we are doing here. I'm just going to take this a bit on hand and situated here just bear with me a little bit a little puppet show here <laughs> there we go all right good And let me let me terminate the uh, YouTube. This is a little uh, 
acrobatic adventure here. Just <laughs> close this thing. There we go. All right. There we go. We're done. Now we are back on regular Facebook. Very good. Okay. I couldn't juggle two things in at the same time. <laughs> okay. Hope uh, hope things are okay now. When we've closed this one, we should have more of a Wi-Fi power for Facebook. And until I figure out um, how the uh, <laughs> the YouTube one goes, perhaps better to stick here. So, okay, uh, we are now dedicated on this one channel on Facebook today. And uh, let's see if we have a regular uninterrupted connection. Uh, Sonia, are you still there? I haven't heard back from you since a couple of words. Um, so, BB, did you did you hear what I mentioned regarding getting a, a warning from YouTube? You just need to push that bell. Now, the rest of you, now you can throw in your question. Is only on Facebook now. We are not broadcasting on YouTube as my plans failed. So is everybody's going to be quiet today <laughs> or have we, have we run, our, run out the course of this, this subject? It's funny that I have the same Wi-Fi system for both the cell phone and the laptop, but on a cell phone, it's very clear. Amber, I don't, I have closed the YouTube channel, so I don't see the messages there. So if you like, you can write your question again here as you are now on Facebook, and I can read it here. I've closed that laptop, so I don't have access to it anymore. So redo your questions, if you will. So the funny thing is that the reception or the Wi-Fi connection for the cell phone is the same as the laptop. But YouTube can't utilize that as good as Facebook does. So it's interesting for me that why, so it's not really just the connection or the Wi-Fi bit power that I have is, you know, the bit rate is also the technology. Oh, Amber, so you wrote a question on, on Facebook. Let me find out. Ah, here it is. You say, talk about self-perception. <laughs> well, I'm gonna make it more specific to your case or to your specific question, because that's a, that's a big topic. 
it could go into all kinds of different angles and tangents. So fine tune it a little bit, if you will, and I'll be more than happy to. By the way, the concoction today is cranberry juice, no sugar, pure cranberry juice, and one good scoop of crystallized dried beets powder from Germany, and mixed together, just this much cranberry juice, the rest that, and then the rest is hot water. It's actually very good for you. It's pretty good. Ah, <laughs> Amber says, no case here, just giving you a topic. No, <laughs> Amber, I've got lots of topics, but if I want to start talking about them, it'll be hours and hours. So I want to specifically be of use uh, for everybody who is tuning in for their specific cases. Otherwise, that would... We've already done lots of lectures. We have over 750 videos on YouTube now on different topics all the lectures all the live talks and so on and so forth so if you just go on on YouTube and look at the playlist we'll have over 65 playlists each one of them one of them is just about the psyche one of them is about um, the partners and you know relationships and breakups uh, one of them is about anxiety and stuff all kinds of things there so for that I've done my job there. <laughs> this is all for you guys. So let's see. Zaheen says, how to forgive someone who doesn't value your emotions and betrays your trust? It seems to me, the question would be, why should you forgive that person? Why can't you just move on? Why do you need to forgive anyone? What happens if you forgive someone or you don't forgive someone? Whatever it is, the effect of it is on you. That person is oblivious to whether you forgive him or not. So what you're really doing, you're trying to give validation to yourself that I can handle this, I can manage this, and I'm strong, so I forgive him. You don't have to forgive anybody. You can just say, I don't give a shit move on because your worth and value should not be dependent on if somebody has or has not cheated you should not be dependent on if somebody has been true to you or has not betrayed you or betrayed you your worth and value is ineffected unaffected unaffected by their behavior it's their shortcomings it's a reflection on them their behavior is a reflection on them. Why should it be a reflection on you that you would feel, I'm okay, I can forgive them? Why do you have to play this game with yourself? You don't have to forgive or not forgive anybody. Now, who are we to think that if we forgive them, things are different if we don't? Things, it's only for us. So understand the fact that you're not affected by their behavior. Their behavior towards you or towards however their lifestyle is, is not a reflection on you. And you are the master of your own worth and value. And you don't need to convince your watcher, your controller, your consciousness, that your thoughts are being born from the contents of your consciousness. And there is a communication, or so to speak, a sort of communication between your consciousness, the observer, and you the thought and now you want to prove to your observer which you think of it as higher than you which is supposedly judging all your thoughts and your actions that you're okay and you're strong and you're trying to prove to yourself because your consciousness is you and yet you're treating your consciousness as if it is a connect connection to a divine a, a deity somewhere 
it is all you. So what it is that makes you feel like you need to forgive some asshole who has done you wrong in order to look good in front of your watcher, observer, the consciousness, it's all you. There is no difference. In the video that I have put together on, on YouTube, the, the quality of our life, the watcher and the watched, controller and the controlled, the observer and the observed, I have discussed these two, the relationship between the conscious and the thoughts. And the, the question of, is the observer, the consciousness, which is the field of the known where thoughts are born from it? And we've discussed this in detail, how thought is born and what's its relationship with consciousness, how consciousness was put together and what is the relationship with thoughts. We've discussed it in other videos that you can just go in and key in consciousness or thoughts and consciousness and it will come to you and you can see it. But in short, the relationship between thought and consciousness that has made some or most or all in this world, most people in this world, think that there is some kind of a monkey mind, some kind of a observer, some kind of a judge over you. That's why you're talking to yourself. You're, you're judging your thoughts and you're thinking to yourself and you're hearing yourself and then you think that is independent of the thought. And you think thought is actually born from the content of your observer, the consciousness. Which in fact is true because the field of the known, the memory, the consciousness, all the things that you've been exposed throughout your life, learned and dogmas and religions and um, customs and guidelines and the books you read, the movies you watched, all the things that you've been exposed to have created this field of the known. And your thought is born from this field. Yet, when a thought is born from this field, so to speak, an action comes from that thought. From that action, an experience is registered. From that experience, a knowledge is gathered. That knowledge is recorded in your memory and becomes part of the consciousness. So guess what? Is it the consciousness, the field of the known, that the thought was born out of it, which is the, the roots of the thought? Or was it the thought, as we could see, thought, action, experience, knowledge, knowledge into the memory? Thought that actually created the consciousness. So if it's the thought that created the consciousness, the observer, the watcher, consciousness, is actually the observed, the watched, the thought. So in other words, it's the thought that made the consciousness. Yet you're trying to judge your thoughts by your consciousness and constantly thinking they have to prove something to something that is not you, consciousness. It's all thoughts. It's all you. You don't actually need to prove anything to yourself by thinking, I have to forgive this person so I will be considering myself by myself as a good person. I feel really fine. You feel fine anyway. You just have to understand that their behavior does not reflect on you and you don't have to put up with it and you can simply say goodbye and move on and be in control of your life and your you know, actions and reactions, rather than having to think that you need someone to apologize to you or you forgive them in order to have closure. These are all reactions of, between thought and consciousness as we so uh, simply and in a limiting way we discussed just just a second ago. So I hope that would be something for you to think about as an answer for your question in regards to how to forgive someone who doesn't value your emotions and betrayals. It's like saying, how can I deal with a merchant who's cheating my money and s selling the product so expensive? But don't deal with it. Get out of the store. That's the end of that. You don't have to 
understand it and intellectualize it and forgive that uh, a cheating merchant, uh, a thief, and then say, how do I deal with it? Don't. Get out of the store, go to another store. This one too is not respecting you, is not loyal to the relationship, is not true. Next person. You know, there's no shortage of people in this world. <laughs> that's that's for sure. <laughs> now, Jacob has put his question uh, in a complete way, and he says, <clears throat> I tried to, oh, he says, I tried to let her go as nice as possible but it still hurt she had she had became negative in reactions especially when i couldn't respond quickly she lives 500 miles away that's lucky <laughs> so we have never met face to face my goodness then why do you continue that jacob Only corresponding Facebook, mail, text. So, why would you even want to have anything to do with it? Why is it a question? She's obviously. I have a I have a video on long distance relationships. If you go on the channel and 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 key in long distance relationship, you'll have a video or two or a few. And I've discussed my views on that elaborately, in an elaborate way, and detail. Uh, but here, in short, when you are in sort of a connection, or you call it a relationship, I mean, I wonder how could it be a relationship when two people are only connected in one aspect of their lives. As you know, our life is made of the mind and body. There is a mind, the energy of mind, connection with the universe and the energy that flows through us and our thoughts, patterns and our energy that we extend and we receive. And that's how the part of the entity that we are. And then the physical part and the mind and body must be coordinated so we can manifest our total power. In order to show this, what I just said, you go on my channel and, and search for a video <clears throat> which is an excerpt of a seminar I did at the local university a couple of years ago in regards to the end of fear. And in that video, I showed and demonstrated the, uh, the role of mind, role of thought in fear and role of thought in our coordination and our powers, which are naturally ours, but we are pretty much most of us unaware of it. So key in for... Uh, unliftable body or mind power or willpower mind power I think power of mind something like that power of mind or unliftable body um, power of mind um, or the end of fear which is a long one it's a one hour one but there's two version of it which has a thumbnail of some someone bigger than me is trying to lift me up from the ground and you can at least look for that and you will see that the entity of mind and body, when it is coordinated, we manifest our total power in ways that you have never thought possible. And it's against the law of physics. Which that tells you, you need both mind and body at the same place. So you will be encountering or interacting with whatever it is that you're negotiating in life in whole. Otherwise, you're neither using your total existence, total abilities and qualities, nor your total powers in whatever it is that you're dealing with. And when it comes to relationships, when it's a long distance relationship, well, you're only using one part of your ability to connect with someone. You know, you're not using the physical part in order to fulfill yourself and also complete the connection and relationship that you have with that girl, which is far away. So in other words, what you're really doing is you've created an illusion of a relationship without a way 
to let the mind taste in an earthling way. Look, layman says tongue taste and legs walk. But in reality, mind tastes uh, through tongue and mind walks uh, through manipulation of the legs. So the apparatus, the physical body that we have is in service of the mind so the mind can experience this life in more than one way, which is the energy and the thought and images and intellectual way of experiencing life. And it adds to its, this experience using the sensories, you know, the touch, the taste, the eyesight, you know, all these five senses that you have uh, through using our body which then the body helps the mind to experience what it cannot experience in physical uh, life. It can experience it non-physically, but anything physical, the mind can't experience it. So that's, we, we, that's one reason we have the mind, the, the, the body, hands, legs, and so on. So it can take the mind to places and also help the mind to feel things that it cannot feel if there is no connection of apparatus or peripherals by touch and the sensories and the uh, um, synaptic neurons and all that that transfers all these feelings for the mind to actually give it a physical existence to what otherwise it cannot have a physical experience. Yet in a long distance relationship, you have decided that you think the relationship between two people, that they both are only complete when their mind and body both are coordinated, that they're at the same place, and they're both working together to deal and negotiate and interact with something, which is with each other, with the relationship. But you're saying that only the mind part is enough and it'll be a complete relationship. So from the outset, it's lame. It's a non-starter. That relationship will not go anywhere. Why? Because you will end up connecting with each other's mind and thoughts, but then there is no follow-up with the other necessities of, of your existence, your entity, which is the physical touch, the intimacies, and the feelings that through the physical experiences, the mind can also complete its experience in that relationship. So naturally, my opinion about long distance relationship, unless it's only a few months in order to prepare to physically be in the same place and the same city and the same vicinity of each other, it's futile. Never a long distance relationship is any good idea unless it is just for a short period of time. In other words, you're just getting to know each other and in a few months you have an ability to actually be together for a longer period of time to see if this actually would work as it sounds like it works on paper, meaning on face, on talks. Because everybody in a long distance relationship through Skype or email or this and that, they have their best foot forward. They look nice, they cleaned up, they everything. There's no issues, there's nothing that bothers you from each other because you haven't really seen each other in action and how you interact with the world out there on daily lives. So it's all been no issue type of connection. But when you actually end up being together, going on a date or going on, a, on an outing or going on a, I don't know, activity, a sports activity or a restaurant having dinner or you interact with other people or interact with each other's way of eating or way of ordering or way of interacting with other people or the standards and the orders that each one of you have will see how much conflict or division is there or not there by actually physically experiencing uh, um, spending time with each other. But when you don't do that, it all seems like an angelic. And for a half an hour, you two are good. And then there's nothing else to talk. Okay, I'll talk to you tomorrow, honey. Okay, that's it. And then tomorrow, the same shit. But you never get to know each other because it's all imaginary. It's a theater. Not that you're trying, each one of you trying to um, uh, uh, kind of um, 
um, fool each other or pretend. No, but there is no more that you can share on such uh, uh, um, uh, forms, such scenarios. So, what happens in long distance relationship after a while, when it takes too long, then you will start thinking that something is missing and that is the physical experience of this relationship. Then somebody from her side could be around her and some girl from your side could be around there that seems like oh, clo close proximity. You can actually satisfy this need of human touch and human relation and you end up having experiences of going out to a movie or dinner or some sports activities or interaction or coffee, tea or whatever. And then you feel this is more convenient and more pleasing, more fulfilling because it has both mind and the body experience all at the same time. But the long distance one only has the mind, thought, illusion experiences, but doesn't have the rest of it. That's why it always, most of them, if not always, breaks down. Long distance relationship is only okay for maybe a few months and you hope to see each other and actually see how you guys deal with life or you've been together for a long while and due to businesses or some circumstances, you have to uh, go somewhere else for a month or a few months and then you come back and that again could work fine. But when it gets too long, you guys are all, everybody's just a human being. We all have our shortcomings and needs. And eventually, if it comes long enough, most relationships long distance have a very good tendency of breaking up. Let alone if it started as a long distance, there is no physical memory uh, to it or more than just talks of, on a daily basis. So I suggest you forget about it, move on, and don't give a damn. It's maybe she's met somebody else or you should focus on meeting somebody close to you and have a full experience of relationship and to be able to know and see each other how you really are, not just on talks. Okay, now let's go to the next one. <sighs> Murdoch says... Oops, lost it. Merak says, our childhood upbringing affects our adult relationships and can cause problems with choices. So healing those young wounds somehow is important. First, do you think? How is a proper way to achieve the achieve that? Well, you know, the good news is that human being doesn't remember all the bad things that one goes through. And mostly we have a mechanism that over time we forget the bad stuff and we're focusing on what it is. The other good thing is that when you're grown up and you may have been uh, treated or raised in, in a way that it's not helpful for your uh, adulthood choices and uh, actions and reactions towards others or life or decisions that you want to make or choices, but you're no longer child. Therefore, you don't need to necessarily hang on to the fact because this happened in childhood, because I was treated this way, therefore that I have to deal with it. There is no dealing with it. It's dead. It's non-existence, that whatever it was. Uh, if you were not treated right or if you were raised in a certain lifestyle or certain way that uh, it was obviously shortcomings, if it was negative or if it wasn't elaborate enough or good enough, it was a shortcoming of the uh, adults who were supposedly were your guardian. So that is not a reflection on you. So there's really nothing for you to deal with because you were not at any fault or had no uh, part in 
having been in a situation that you were facing with or being uh, affected uh, by the interactions you would be uh, noticing around you by the uh, people that were supposedly your guardians or their behavior was introducing some ideas or some behavior that was incomprehensive or totally uh, useless or irrelevant to your being, your lifestyle and your mentality and, and, and uh, for your life. So what is it there that you want to deal with? Look at it. Let's come back to this time. I walk out my home and there would be some um, inappropriate behavior or uh, uh, words uttered or interaction with maybe somebody or in the this, in this, in this street or in, in, a, in a shop or something. So what does it have to do with me? That interaction or that person or that uh, experience is an experience of another human being who it, it reflects on them, on their shortcomings. Why do I have to not deal with it? If somebody, let's say, cussed at me or somebody pushed me or somebody uh, was disrespectful to me or whatever happened, I have no part of it. And I'm not supposed to think that I have to deal with it. If it's a dangerous thing or total uh, nonsense, then there are laws and police and authorities and so on and so forth. But it is not supposed to become part of a guilt of yours or something you have to deal with or something that you have to uh, have uh, been able to make it not uh, be interacted with you in such an improper way or uh, uttered words that were not in, in your vocabulary or whatever it is that it was. It is nothing for you to think that your childhood, therefore, you have to go back and deal with it. Most of the childhood, you had nothing to do with whatever was happening. And because they happen, you're here and you're a new person. You're a different person. Your whole consciousness is now grown and developed and changed and lots of new information is there. And whatever it was that you were subjected or affected to was based on the information you had and the knowledge you had how to deal with things at that age. So what's there for you to think that you have to deal with in order to make your choices? Yes. It affects, let's say, if your mom or your dad um, constantly bought a certain kind of biscuit, you liked it, and now you think that's the kind of brand you want to have. Or always, you know, they dressed you, look like, a, I don't know, a clown, so you might like a clown clothing right now. Or if they always, you know, treated you with respect, you're accustomed to be respected. If they always... You know, the reaction and interaction and what they did and what surrounding was like would, could have, if it was positive, could have something for you to, uh, you know, see if you would like to make that judgment on based on that experience of, let's say, having that kind of a, uh, I don't know, shoes or that kind of a food that you ate, you like it or don't like it. But the rest of it, human being is smart enough to know if something was negative, you will not let it uh, be part of your decision making today. It's not like you have to deal with it or do something to get rid of it. It's automatically gone by your wisdom, by your smarts, by your ability to analyze and see what is right, what isn't. Then you may not have noticed because you were not in control and the people around you were, but now you clearly know that was some stupid uh, behavior or stupid um, uh, decisions that the parents or the teachers or siblings or friends made or whatever it was and you were now you are now much older and you can see the differences and you make your decisions based on your intelligence today so you're free and clear to make correct decisions now based on how your conscience has been formed since then not including that you know it's no different than if I'm doing math and I'm making mistakes by not knowing how this formulation and how this problem can be solved. And then I get a tutor or I learn in a higher grade how to do it right. Now I got to say, oh, because I've been doing it wrong and it was taught to me wrong or the teacher was doing it wrong and writing it wrong on the blackboard at the lower uh, grade of class that I was, 
So now that I know what the right way of solving this problem is, I should first deal with that. What's there to deal? That's gone, that's dead. And this is clear to you, is the correct way of behavior, correct way of making the uh, solution ha come together, correct way of making decisions in your life based on what you know is right now. Not, well, I have to deal with something that wasn't right then. What wasn't right then doesn't exist anymore. You don't have to deal with it anymore. It's dead, it's gone. Whoever mistake, whom, whomever mistake it was, it's non-consequential. You're not part of it, never was, and you're not either now. And you have become your own person as we all evolve and change all through our lives. So focus on what you think is right now. Make your decisions based on what is good for you, for humanity, for the society. And all those are what is your responsibility. Nothing else. I hope that would be something for you to ponder on. Brenda, good to see you. Been a long time. Again, did you guys not have the subscription on YouTube? Because I've been having lots of um, live talks on YouTube. And yet I haven't seen any of you guys there. So uh, my question is, is, are you not getting uh, um, notice from YouTube that there's a live talk or there's a new video or so on. Now, Zaheen says, I have been in a five-year relationship and one day suddenly I have found out she has switched her phone off. I tried to call her several times, but it was unreachable. Later, I've found out she got married to someone <laughs> someone else <laughs> my goodness and then <laughs> Zaheen asked can you please explain for God's sake Zaheen why should I explain how do I know <laughs> obviously she's an idiot who <laughs> has no uh, proper behavior manners to talk to someone with five years of relationship that she's going to get married somewhere she wants to break up these are people of cowardly behavior there's nothing to explain you don't need explanation neither mine nor yourself you don't need an explanation for things that are totally crazy and unexplainable and um, a, a responsibility of the person who acts on them has made them why do you have to worry about explaining it why do you need explanations i have a video on on, on YouTube, in, the, in, in one part of it says, why do you wonder why donkey pisses in the street? That's what it does. Do you need an explanation from the donkey? But that's donkey. That's what donkey does. It pisses in the street. Doesn't know why. Doesn't care why. And you don't need to ask him why. Because you see, you're, no, you're, not, you're not amazed. You see, it's a donkey. That's what it does. So you don't ask why could someone explain to me why donkey is a street because you know it's a donkey you expect nothing more you expect it to have that level of understanding but yet from everyone who's got two eyes two ears or you know it looks like a human being you expect them to be the wise of the world and proper manner and so on well there are lots of us that look like human beings, but still just as donkey or a monkey why do you need explanation call it for what it is she is who he is who she is and you don't have to explain what she did she didn't care to explain because obviously she either didn't care or didn't have any explanation for it whatever the circumstance i don't give a damn the circumstance i don't care if they chose her that husband because there were traditions or arranged marriage or any bullshit that you want to think of it she could have had the courtesy of calling you talking to you and explain or for whatever reason she's changed her mind or what is it's decided for her whatever it was and she didn't which means she's come back you don't need to need an explanation from a scumbag from someone who doesn't have decency of respecting herself who had chosen to be in a relationship for five years forget about you she didn't even respect her own choice 
of being in a relationship for five years with you to sever it, to explain, to talk, to discuss it, and then move on. So why is it that you think you have to have an expl explanation from someone who acts just like a donkey does what is natural to him? And that's natural to her. Lots of people look like human beings, but they don't have the proper manners or behavior or decency. Now, it could be a woman or it could be a man. Move on. Move on. Don't get bogged down with these things. Don't try to explain all the stupid things that you see people behave in their daily lives. Jacob says, thank you for the knowledge. I feel much better now and will watch your YouTube channel for more information, spot on information. Thank you again. Yes, moving on. Good for you, Jacob. Now, I want to ask you guys to do me and yourself a favor. As I mentioned before, I now know thousands and thousands and thousands of people around the world in, without exaggeration, have been benefited from the channel and the contents of the channel. And they, on a daily basis, write me emails, thanking me, giving me their full support and appreciation for the benefits they've received, life-changing benefits they've received from the videos they've watched on the YouTube channel of mine. With, as they say, excellent, exemplary, extraordinary contents. I'm flattered and I thank you very much. However, at the same time, they also say that they have watched many other videos on YouTube which are utter nonsense and doesn't help them. Yet, those videos and those channels have hundreds of thousands of subscribers or viewers. And this can only be remedied, in our case, to be helped by you guys to support and promote the channel by sharing the videos that you like, whether these videos could be relationship videos, or if you don't like to share a relationship video on your social media channels, because you don't want anybody to know that you're going through a breakup, whatever it is, but there are many, many, many other videos that has nothing to do with uh, relationships in my channel. If you go on the playlist called The Psyche, you will have many videos that have nothing to do with relationship, but it has to do with thoughts, consciousness, fear, desire, and ego, and he explains all these in a detailed way, which is very informative and good knowledge to have, which many of you have enjoyed. And lo and behold, all what you're hearing and the relationship is what's really saving you, and you tell me how, benefit, how much benefit you get from all these videos of the relationship kind, are all based on the playlist, The Psyche. It is all about understanding the relation between thoughts and consciousness. What consciousness is, what thought is, what is fear, desire, and ego. What is the role of ego, desire, and fear into all these things that you feel and you act and react and negotiate on a daily basis. It's all because of that knowledge. So, even though we're using on the relationship and breakup forum, but it's all about the psyche. So, please share the videos on your social media, promote the channel any way you can, promote the site, mindthatseekstruth.com, that many of you have purchased many of the uh, ebooks that I, have, I see that you guys are enjoying. And those ebooks, as you know, have been turned into such a cheap prices like $4.99, $5.99, $6.99. And why? Because there is no economic agenda here for the ebooks. Ebooks are copy of the printed matter, printed books, which there are heavy, many pages of 360 or 600 pages of different books, depending on the books, and they're heavy to mail out. That's why the prices are $80 and $100 US, because shipping is included. But because I knew many of you wanted it, but you couldn't afford it on different currencies around the world, I've turned them into ebooks, and the ebooks are just as the price of a cup of coffee or tea. So now that we've done these, for everybody to benefit from, and everybody is, please do share the videos on your social medias in a way that is appropriate for you. Uh, promote the site, mindthatseekstruth.com, on your social media. Somehow that we can get to be known, more popular, and the channel would get more subscribers, 
and viewers so at least all of that will help the channel to generate more finances so we can continue and better the programs and the efforts that we're making and become more helpful to more people around the world. So that was my request. I hope you guys will remember and do that because that's the only way that we can actually do justice to the need of the people around the world who actually feel this channel is very helpful for them, but somehow we don't get enough viewers, subscribers, and we would like to be more helpful than we have ever been. I'd appreciate that ahead of time. Now, Maggie, good to see you here, dear. Uh, Brenda, Brenda says, I did not get any notice from YouTube, but Brenda, you need to click on that bell. There is a subscribe, you're subscribed on the YouTube, but you need to click on that bell so it will notify you. And until I find a good way of having uh, um, a good reception, a good, uh, good, uh, what is it, connection, internet connection for YouTube, I'll do it on Facebook again, uh, and eventually we'll be able to bring it back. Hello, Maggie. Good to see you, dear. I heard you play the violin. It was amazing. You're a master at that. It was very pleasing to hear, to listen, and um, kudos. <laughs> Good for you. You're an expert. It must be a beautiful feeling when you play that uh, instrument. And it was very nice. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you for putting that up, posting that. Uh, Brenda says, thank you. Loved seeing you again. Thank you, Brenda. Delighted that you could have a chance and time to join us here. Now, let me see what time is it. I think I may have answered all the questions. And without holding you guys back too long, uh, I think we started. Oh, yeah, it's been... It's been um, with ups and downs that we had because of the YouTube and Facebook being broadcast at the same time and we had difficulty on YouTube perception or uh, the broadcast. Um, maybe it means I can't do them both at the same time. Uh, <laughs> and so I think it's been long enough. We've done what we could have done today. I appreciate you guys spending time with me and being here do please go on YouTube and do click on that bell so in case I actually find a way to have a good smooth uh, transmission on YouTube you can be notified and we can all eventually go this easier setup I open the laptop and it's all there for the uh, for the uh, cell phone for Facebook although it's a better connection but somehow it's not like I don't know, it's little, I have to place it somewhere, I don't know. <laughs> so anyhow, go on YouTube and click on that bell so maybe we will eventually be able to know and learn how YouTube can have a better um, transmission and then I will hold it there. Until then, I keep doing it here as well. But please do move on to YouTube when you see me uh, live there. Anyhow, I hope that you guys are taking good care of yourselves and uh, in all aspects of your life and look forward to talk to you again be good to yourself and to the others love you all thank you again and talk to you soon bye for now